Hi, my name is Katarina Bozer, and I am the current president of Individual Differences in Learning, which is a nonprofit here in uh, Howard County, Maryland. We do advocacy for kids who are different learners. Uh, that includes what we call twice exceptional learners. That means they have exceptionalities in the form of uh, some gifts and talents and strengths, often those that are not recognized in school. Uh, but they might also have a learning disability or learning challenge such as ADHD or Asperger syndrome or dyslexia, uh, among others. So we're all about trying to advocate for these kinds of kids in, in the schools and with their parents at home. So if you'd like to find out a little bit more about uh, resources available for twice exceptional kids and other kids who learn differently, uh, please come see us at www.gifteddifferentlearners.org. It's really important that an S goes at the end of that. You can also find us at www.individualdifferencesinlearning.org. That's kind of a longer one. Uh, either way, you will um, find a calendar of events. We do monthly speakers. We have a Yahoo group where our parents and other professionals get to ask questions and get answers. We provide links to other resources that are available. And then for our members, we have a monthly newsletter that's written with psychologists and counselors and professionals in the area with all kinds of great tips and information for you. We're also getting ready to put a, some video up on our website uh, that we produced that um, shows these kids from the point of view of uh, students and teachers who work with the students as well as um, clinic clinicians and tutors who provide some really useful information both for teachers and for parents. And so I would like to now introduce the speaker of this podcast, uh, Chris Bougay, who came and spoke at one of our monthly meetings and our parents and other educators from Howard County, Maryland were really excited to learn about his eight is enough tools and uh, we were thrilled to have him. So without further ado, enjoy the podcast and I hope you enjoy some of the resources that you find for your twice exceptional learner. Welcome to the AT Tips Cast, exploring and investigating the implementation of assistive technology in public schools. I'm your host, Chris Bougay. This is episode number 45, recorded on December 10th, 2009. The ability to sequence is a fundamental necessity in order to effectively communicate life events to others. Sequencing, as a skill, is the foundation of storytelling, whether that is simply spouting off the events of a day or something more complex like writing a work of fiction. You might know a number of students, especially students who have an identified disability of speech-language impairment, who have goals for sequencing activities because expressing events in order is difficult for them. You might see a goal that reads, Student X will sequence six events in correct chronological order, or something similar to that. An activity that many educators practice with students is putting a series of pictures in the correct order from first to last. What many people don't necessarily realize is that there are actually two levels of difficulty to sequencing. The first level I like to call the cardinal ordinal level of sequencing, or if you prefer, the plus minus level of sequencing. The second level I like to call logical sequencing. When most people think of sequencing, they usually think of this logical type of sequencing, and for most, this is the more difficult of the two. Let me give some examples to help clarify. Imagine taking a picture of a ring stacker toy every time a student places a ring on the stack. Later, if a student was trying to sort those pictures, a strategy that student could use to help them put the pictures in order would be to count the rings. Picture 1 would have no rings on the stack, picture 2 would have one ring on the stack, picture 3 would have two rings on the stack, and so forth. The student could use their ability to count to help them sequence the pictures. This applies to any sort of sequencing where something is added or subtracted. For example, pictures of the number of icicles that have fallen off an overhang, or pictures of building a snowman, you get the idea. It even works for pictures that reflect measurement, like pictures of a candy cane getting smaller and smaller as I eat it. Mm -mm -mm. Now imagine taking a picture of each step of an activity, like brushing your teeth. 
First you get out the toothbrush, or maybe first you get out the toothpaste, then you turn on the water, then you wet the toothbrush, then you put the toothpaste on the toothbrush, then you put the toothbrush in your mouth, and then you brush up, brush up, brush up. In this example, if a student were trying to order these pictures, they'd have to reason out that the toothbrush doesn't go in the mouth until after the toothpaste is on it. The student couldn't rely simply on counting items in the picture to figure out the sequence. Other examples might be pictures of going sledding or cutting out cookies or of a plump and jolly white bearded dude leaving presents in stockings. Again, I think you get the idea. My point is simply to think of sequencing in these two categories and then work on them and maybe even write goals for them with these categories in mind. Since I brought up working on them, way back on November 9th, 2009, I was given the opportunity to present for a group of parents and teachers in Howard County, Maryland, who are part of the Individual Differences in Learning Association, which you heard Katarina mention in the bumper at the beginning of this episode. I did a presentation called Eight is Enough, which focused on using free or commonly found technology to assist a variety of students in meeting their educational goals. During the presentation, I went through a sequence of events that explained how to use PowerPoint to assist students with writing difficulties. Two of the three strategies in this sequence have already been covered in previous AT Tips Cast episodes. The photo album feature of PowerPoint was covered in episode number 39, and Power Talk was covered way back in episode number 9. The sequence described during the presentation invites a student who is learning how to tell a story to start to tackle the task by using the photo album feature and ending with Power Talk, with another strategy stuck there in the middle between those two. That strategy stuck in the middle, which I'm calling AT tip number 71, is to practice sequencing the events of a story by using the slide sorter view in PowerPoint. I'm going to click on the photo album feature, and it says, guess what it helps me do? It helps me make a photo album, exactly. Why would that, why would a student want that? Well, I'm going to, here's my pictures, right? A couple of pictures of these cute actors that I've hired. To, for this presentation, and I'm just going to pick, I don't know, I'll just grab all these pictures, okay? And I'm going to insert these pictures into photo album. There they all are, and I can change the order of these pictures if I want. I can uh, move these up or down, but right down here, it says picture layout. I'm going to choose one picture with title, okay? So, and it gives me this little, cute little image down here where the picture is going to look like this on my slide and I'm going to be able to put text right up here. I'm going to click create and now it creates a photo album putting all those pictures perfectly sized, right? You don't have to try and insert pictures and work with the size and get them all right. Put them all in there. How many of you take your kids on, if you're a teacher, field trips, or if you're a parent, to grandma's house, right? And everyone has digital cameras nowadays, so you're taking pictures of Christmas or Thanksgiving or Halloween, right? And so you're not having these on your digital camera. Teachers have access to digital cameras in the, the library. Some teachers might have their own, right? And they're taking digital pictures of the field trip or the activities that they're doing. So all I've done is put those pictures into PowerPoint. Now, for some students, this is the, the next thing. I'm just going to go over to the view. That's what I'm looking for. There it is, view. If I go to the View tab, or View, there's different ways you can look at PowerPoint. This is the normal view where I can make one slide in here, or I can go to the Slide Sorter view. Again, Chris climbing on his soapbox. One of the things that I think a lot of students are lacking when it comes to the writing process, a, a, a step they may have skipped or, or that they're immediately thinking of the words that go on the page, is sequencing. So what order do these things go in? You know, when I have an idea, what order should I put them in? Because I'm just kind of rambling off all my thoughts. So here's kind of a way of working on sequencing where I can just take these pictures and I can create a story just by dragging them around. So in this case, let's say uh, this is my um, son Tucker, and we're going to do a story about his typical day uh, of, of his life. So first he um, goes to school. Uh, he Oh, well, maybe here he's hugging his sister. Let me move that over here. He hugs his sister goodbye. Then he goes to school, um, and uh, he's, he's really happy at school. He likes that. Today they saw a fire truck, so that's good in the right spot. Um, oh, he got a bonk on the head when he fell on the playground, but he was all happy because he got to eat some pumpkin pie at the end. You get the idea. If I only had four or five pictures here, 
I could manipulate them into a story, per se. So this is for that student that um, needs a visualization, right? And they use the, need a picture to kind of get the idea going, get the, get the story going. Ah, I don't know what to write. What should I write about? What should you write about? I don't know. I don't know what to write. <laughs> yeah, what did you do this weekend? Nothing. You know, well, here's the pictures that we did this weekend. We went to Grandma's. We went to the Ravens game, you know. Um, the Bills beat them 42 to nothing. And then, Bills fan. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's torture. Uh, um, so you could make stories like that. Students could make stories and then just put them in order, and that's the end of the story. Okay, I got them in order. Use the visual assistant to tell the story. So scale this way back to um, sequencing that the speech therapist does in the speech. Okay, we have these picture sequencing cards to kind of tell the story. First we, um, first we have the pizza... The, the dough, we're making the dough, then we're rolling it out. These are sequencing things that they're, they're doing in first or second grade. And if students miss that, that sequencing, this is the way you kind of, you know, another way of doing it, per se. Now, all you have to do is write one sentence about this picture. Student, I'm pleased to see you. Great. And now who wants to come up and who wants to put the second sentence in? Okay? I could go on with other pictures. I mean, I could scale this as much as, I, as many pictures I, as I have, right? You went to the Uber Hazy this weekend, and you took pictures of all that. You just write descriptions about each picture, getting the topics of what to write about, you know? Or pictures of polar bears that you got off the Internet, you know? And now you're doing your essay about polar bears using the pictures as Do you see what I'm getting at here? So, okay. So let me save this as a PowerPoint presentation. I'll save it right to my desktop. I'll call it... Uh, Tucker's lucky day. <laughs> it's saving down here. The, the larger the file, the more pictures, the longer it takes to save. But going back to the question about what about recording, or what about listening to stuff that, uh, other than Microsoft Word, right? It wouldn't be a great if there was a way that you could listen to this PowerPoint so that I could go back and find the same mistakes and go through the same thing where I didn't, you know, what if I left out the little word with, you know, having to date you, you know, and I left out that little word with, and it's not going to be picked up in PowerPoint, wouldn't it be great if I could listen to it? Right here, Tucker's Lucky Day, if I right-click on it and do Narrate with Power Talk, it opens up Photo Album by LCP. Hello, Sister I'm pleased to see you. I am GP1499.jpg. It's reading the the outside. Hey, Hoggy, what are you doing today? DSPN000912.jpg. Having a date with you. Help the help that. So you get the idea, right? It's it. Power Talk is free. It's uh, something you can find on the internet. Um, that you again just Google Power Talk and uh, or just do an internet search for Power Talk, and you can. Um, Install it, and it's free, and you have PowerPoints read to you. Another, so student can use it as a way to um, check their, their writing, but it's also a great way is that, you've, that you've got a student that um, goes out and finds this great, great PowerPoint presentation on polar bears, but the text in there, I mean, that's one simple sentence, but, you know, some PowerPoint presentations might have a whole block of text, you know. No, no it's the same issue, you know. How am I going to read that? Well, it'll read that text. Thanks again to Katarina for the invitation to present. I actually have some more sound clips from that presentation that I might play in a future episode. Before I leave you, I just have a few quick announcements. I wanted to remind you that I'll be presenting two sessions at the ATIA 2010 conference in Orlando at the end of January. The first session is from 245 to 345 on January 28th, titled Alternative Professional Development. Yeah, if you've been listening to the AT Tips cast, you heard that before. The second session is from 9.15 to 10.15 on January 29th with Beth Poss, titled UDL 2.0. If you're going to ATIA in Orlando, I hope I get to meet you there. Also, I did a blog-only post over at attipscast.wordpress.com containing my nominations for some of the categories for the 2009 Edge Blog Awards. I hope you get a chance to go over there and check out those nominations. Likewise, the AT Tips cast was nominated for the Best Educational Use of Audio Award. If you're so inclined, please hop on over to edublogawards.com and cast your vote. Voting ends December 16, 2009. Even if you don't vote, let me recommend you head over there to check out the nominations. 
The list of all those nominated in all the different categories is a tremendous resource in itself. So I hope you check it out. And I hope you vote for the AT Tips cast. And finally, in book-related news, the website for The Practical and Fun Guide to Assistive Technology is now live. Head over to isti.org slash chewat. That's I-S-T-E dot org slash chewat to sign up to get an email notification of when the book will become available, which looks like it'll be sometime around March. I've got a link to it, as well as everything else, over at attipscast.wordpress.com. So, until next time, may all your interventions be inclusive, may all your strategies be supportive, and... May your days be merry.